My name is Susie Kayser. I'm the director, or whatever it is, of the Heights Summer Music Camp. Um, I want to welcome, welcome you to our 12th concert, the end of our 12th week in our 12th year. I can't believe we're here. Uh, this week just started a second ago, but I'm sure for those of you who had to drag your kids out and get them here, it felt like a little bit longer week than that. This is a place where what you invest affects what you experience and how you benefit. I am grateful to our amazing leaders, Tamar Gray, Betsy Nalon, and Dan Hine, for their full investment in creating a great experience. I'm grateful to our high school staff for giving their all. They, had, they took care of the details, they did great teaching, they did great connecting, they did great mentoring. They were more role models. I hope they were inspirations to your children. Their creativity was stunning. Their liveliness brought so much alive for all of us. They created a wonderful spirit of adventure and excitement about music. I'm grateful to our professional musicians. They think about kids and music and growth and engagement, and they do really cool stuff to make all of that happen while kids are playing music. One of the funny experiences for me was walking into the viola master class where kids were all lined up in a row next to a set of open music cases, flipping coins off their arms while they were holding their bows as a way to get the true feeling of how you should handle the bow on your instrument. This kind of creative stuff just kind of made camp a lot of fun. I'm so appreciative of our campers. They gave it their all. They found their way, they found their notes, they found the rhythms, they found self-confidence, they found what it was to reach inside. In one week, I think they were transformed. And I want to thank all of you parents for sending them to us. In a week, we moved in, we settled in, we grew, and now we're moving out. I've, it's kind of a full life cycle experience. It's hard for me to see it come to an end. <clears throat> what you hear today is just the tip of the iceberg of what happened. But it's a really nice part of what happened. So let me introduce to you now the Reaching Heights Summer Music Co <clears throat> Camp Choir, directed by Tamar Gray. And we'll be doing this first and then the chamber groups. Have a wonderful time. to say, Akash, am I on? Thank you. I just wanted to say that um, I said to the choir, I almost say this every year, and every, I actually mean it in a new way, that I really enjoyed them. They are truly, truly awesome because they wanted to be there, and so they gave their all, and what we accomplished in four days to me is just unbelievable. I'd like to thank Stu Ferris for um, making the uh, string part to our first piece, Kyrie Eleison. I'd like to thank Christina Wynn for uh, gathering the ukuleles and uh, having that in our last piece, the Bruno Mars piece. And I'd like to thank Mary Beth Catt, who got back from Italy in time to accompany us today, and we're excited about that. And this young man in the soprano section said, if I could mention that he is the only boy, Timothy Tomter, in the sopranos. Timothy, would you wave, please? And he could hit all the high notes, and he can. So we want you to relax and enjoy. The only piece I didn't mention was our middle piece, uh, the Pachin piece, which will feature our soloists, which are in your program. So enjoy.
Hello? Hello. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. I say, good morning, everybody. That's what I like to hear. Okay. Go Cavs! Go Cavs! We've certainly had a lot to celebrate this week, haven't we? That's all right. Uh, come on, let's clap for Cleveland. Let's clap for everything that's been going on here. It's been a very exciting, exciting week to be here with all of the campers, all the high school students, all of the professional colleagues, um, and especially all the wonderful things that have come to bear through Susie Kayser, who is the absolute glue of this camp. Let's all give Susie a big round of applause. And she keeps Tamar and Betsy and me together and in line, so together we're stuck like glue. Oh, yeah. Okay, sorry. Anyway. Um, so, you just heard from the choir. You also heard from the, some of the very talented ukulele players, both high school staff and a couple of our campers. Just a demonstration of one of the things that happens throughout our day. We begin our day with orchestra, then the students go on to do their chamber groups and learn about music theory, um, the nuts and bolts of how music is put together. Um, and in those chamber groups, they also learn how to put those things together in practice and how to become better individual musicians, which is what we all want, so that they're strong, independent players who can come and bring something to bear in the large groups and make an impact. And so now we're going to hear some of those chamber groups. Uh, but before we do that, I also do want to mention one of the great things that we get to do here throughout the day is these electives. So this, you just heard the choir. Um, they did three lovely numbers, and they were accompanied by a couple different groups, which shows you the flexibility that we have, the really great things that come seemingly out of nothing at the beginning of the week. Uh, all of a sudden, we have these great collaborations, these flexible students, campers, and high school who really come together to make it happen for us, and we just get to sit back like proud parents and shed a tear and think how amazing this is. So... Um, then in the afternoon when we do these electives, they get to be in choir, or they get to do jazz, or they get to uh, play percussion. We had a really cool Tambu Bamboo offering by the percussion yesterday. Um, that was sort of a new uh, addition to the camp, thanks to Chris Vandal and all the percussion staff, Larry Smith, Andy Bell, Jeremy Kaufman, Ted Byers, thank you all for making that happen. Um, and ukulele. Of course, ukulele was a new addition this year as well, and that was a lot of fun. Um, got to hear them play a few tunes yesterday. So um, this kids' musical experience throughout the day is really varied and wide and exciting. So uh, now, at this point, we're going to hear from, I don't want to say it wrong. We're going to hear from our first group, Zella Misatrina, and they are going to play um, a really exciting movement by Mozart from his Divertimento in D. So let's hear it. the chamber groups give it up for Zella Misatrina. Zella Messatrina, and we're playing the presto from Mozart's Divertimento in D.
So one of those things that you can obviously see is so valuable about these chamber music performances is to see the kids get up there and do it on their own. One of our big jobs and one of our greatest hopes as music educators is not that um, we get to see these kids perform in large, massive orchestras or huge choirs or become professional musicians. God help us. Um, <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you don't want them to become professional musicians either. Not that it's a bad thing, but it's a hard life. Um, what are you going to do with that degree? Yeah. Um, so at any rate, what we want is these kids to enjoy music. We want them to enjoy playing. We want them to feel like they can do it on their own when they leave us. We want them to feel like, just like when you want to go outside and play a game of basketball, that when you've got the music in your hands, and you've got your instrument, you know a couple other people who can do it, let's get together and play. Let's get together and play. Maybe they will find a community ensemble where they can perform too. Maybe they'll want to just play for themselves. But which, whatever way it happens, we want them to do this for their entire life long. And that's the goal. That's why we do this. And doing the chamber music, I think, is a huge part of that. It empowers people to believe, I don't need to have 30 or 50 or 70 people around me to make music. And this next group, I think, is a real great example of that. Um, we're going to have a group that's an interaction between a staff member and one of our advanced saxophone players, Mario Johnson. Um, Nathan Paul Davis has been in a true inspiration and brings something very special to this camp, which you're about to witness. Um, the art of improvisation the art of listening and being a really great contributor to the ensemble and doing your own thing and really putting your own thumbprint on something. Again, it's a part of empowering people to believe they can do music without having Mr. Hyatt stand up in front of them with a stick. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to welcome to the stage Duality. changes by Nathan Paul Davis.
It's just amazing. And we really wanted you to experience that in the hall because it's that feeling of how many parents out there have ever tried to tell their parent, to tell, tell their kids, let's try and walk this one down slow. Let's try and slow it down here. And I just feel like that piece was full of those moments where we're just saying, let's walk this one down slow. Let's not take it too fast. And that's one of those things we need to bring out in our kids more and more all the time. So again, just really exciting moments to witness and be a part of. Um, this final group is a percussion group. Um, and I do think that they have my favorite name of all the groups this year, Colonel Sanders and the Six Chickens. Um, Another way in which we allow the kids to express themselves, we really try and get them to think about um, who they want to present themselves as as a group. Um, and another thing that is a really, well, I'm not going to go into it right now. We're just going to let this come out here. Fantastic group. Um, Colonel Sanders and the Six Chickens. Let's give it up for them, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>
And as I watched them, I was reminded of something that is an incredibly important part of our day. Um, and that is at the end of our um, elective time, we then go into a part of the day that is incredibly important and we developed a few years ago called the master class. And that's a time when we give them some time to really learn better how to play their instruments where they work individually. And I can see so much progress in these percussionists, how many more important fundamental skills they can demonstrate just from having done that. And it's not just in our percussions, it's everybody. It's all of our specialists help to develop those special fundamentals. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that later, but right now I wanna bring up to the stage someone very important while we reset the stage for the orchestra. Uh, a person with whom we could definitely not, uh, without whom we could definitely do this, and that is Krista Hawthorne, director of Reaching Heights. So I'm going to ask Krista, come on up here. This one? Is this the one I should use? Welcome, good morning, and thank you for being here. I'm Krista Hawthorne, director of Reaching Heights. And I'm so glad you're here because every performer needs an audience. So you are a, an essential part of this camp by being here as an audience for these performers. Reaching Heights is a small organization. We're a local nonprofit with a big heart. We have three part-time staffers, 16 volunteer board members, some who are here. Raise your hand if you're here, staff, board members. And we work hard to do three things, to enrich students, support teachers, and connect the community to our public schools through programs like summer music camp, many villages in school tutoring, role models, which is a speaker series for fifth grade classrooms, the exceptional children's advocacy group, which is a support and, and advocacy group for families with children with special education needs. And events like uh, the Reaching Heights Spelling Bee. Every spring we have an adult community spelling bee and you're invited. And also Reaching Musical Heights, which is every four years. I hope some of you have been to the Reaching Musical Heights concert at Severance Hall. So this is a very special camp. Each camper receives 26 hours of music instruction in the six days of summer music camp. That's equivalent to 52 weeks of 30-minute lessons. And that's not, that's a conservative guesstimate. Stu uh, campers are here from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. That's seven hours. So five hours a day, plus this morning's rehearsal, 26 hours of music education from professional musicians and high school staff who are musical coaches. The ratio of campers to adults, if we include our high school staff, is one adult for every two campers. It's a great ratio. The best thing of all about this camp, though, is that everyone is a teacher and everyone is a student. We all learn so much from each other as we work together to enrich these students with this camp experience and prepare this concert for you. Enjoy.
Bet you weren't expecting that. <laughs> so this is uh, such an exciting moment to see how far everybody has come, how much, um, and hear how much everybody has grown throughout the week. Uh, and it would not be possible, it absolutely would not be possible without so many other people up here than myself. I feel like this is um, not a true representation for me to be up here as conductor uh, and receive such a There are so many people out here responsible for this. Can I please have all my professional staff please stand right now? I have some amazing, amazing staff. Stay standing, stay standing. We're also gonna have all of our high school staff please stand as well. It truly takes a village and we have such a great opportunity with staff members to deliver that village to these kids. Uh, it's always an exciting experience and as Krista and Susie said, everyone is a teacher and everyone learns something here. So we're gonna move on to our next piece. We're walking it down slow here um, with a little bizet, the intermezzo from Carmen. So for this next number, the uh, selections from Star Wars, we have pushed and pushed and pushed these kids tremendously through a very challenging piece of music, technically, musically, uh, in practically every fashion you can imagine. 
but I would also be remiss if I did not give sincere thanks to two people who really made this piece possible for us to play. This is a great arrangement, very accessible, of some extremely challenging music. John Williams' music is certainly nothing for slouches. Um, and these kids have truly risen to the occasion, but we would not have been able to get them there if this music was not arranged in friendlier keys for every single person in this group. And um, I was considering playing this piece for quite a while, but knew that that was one of the big hurdles that we would have. And when my uh, dear friend, and I have to say colleague, even though I wish I could pay him more, um, <laughs> Stu, you know who I'm talking about. Um, he said, you know what? Why don't I just transpose the whole thing? <laughs> you know, no big deal, right? <laughs> so I was like, are you serious? He said, sure, I can scan it in and work on it. And I mean, you know, it'll, it'll be a fun project for me, and I bet I could get Christina Wynn to help me out, too. <laughs> and he did. So I'd like for Stu Ferris and Christina to stand for a special ovation for all their hard work on this. If you want to take a look at the score they transposed, I'll show it to you afterwards. You'll be impressed. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's a great thrill to be able to play this music. It's tough stuff and the kids have come so far, and they're gonna give it their all and their focus, I know, because it takes all that. It takes all that and more. So ladies and gentlemen, selections from Star Wars The Force Awakens, episode seven.
Ladies and gentlemen, there are some very important people here who we have not thanked yet, but we need to. And it's all the parents out here. So all the parents, can you please stand and receive an ovation from your children? We appreciate your willingness to share your children with us this week. We appreciate all the efforts that you have put in to make sure that they learn an instrument, feel supported. Um, we hope that you experience a bump in their practice activity. <laughs> so often the comments we hear, what have you done to my child? They're practicing. <laughs> That's great. So ladies and gentlemen, um, we do want to take some time to celebrate together. Let's all go over to the cafeteria and enjoy a reception together. And I'll bring my Star Wars score, I promise you. Okay, thank you.